This video will show scientific evidence of the health impact of temperature rise in Hong Kong as a result of global climate change. Prepared by the Chinese University of Hong Kong Climate Change and Health Study Group in 2013. Climate change is causing global temperature increase, sea level rise, change in rainfall pattern, and more frequent disasters globally. Temperature increase can have significant impact on health. A human body is usually around 37 degrees. It responds to high temperature by sweating and rise in heart rate to keep the body temperature at a safe level. But too much heat causes the body to lose this ability. For many people, high temperature causes discomfort. Some people develop minor symptoms like heat rash and itchy skin irritation and heat cramps, which involves painful spastic muscles. More life-threatening health concerns would be heat exhaustion and heat stroke, both of which can lead to death. Rising global temperature means that there will be more excessively hot days. Long periods of excessive heat are called heat waves. A heat wave in Europe killed at least 25,000 people in 2003. There is no universal definition of what constitutes an excessively hot day or a heat wave. The duration and intensity of heat that make up a heat wave is relative to the average temperature pattern of a specific geographical area. For example, a heat wave in Alaska, United States may not be a heat wave in Hong Kong. Likewise, a heat wave in Hong Kong may not be considered a heat wave in the Philippines. The average annual temperature of Hong Kong has risen by about 1.5 degrees in the past century, from 22 degrees in 1990 to 23.5 in 2010. With Hong Kong warming up faster than ever, the average annual temperature in 2090 can rise by up to 6.8 degrees. The impact of climate change is not just an issue for future generations. It is happening in Hong Kong every day now. The key temperature threshold for Hong Kong is 28.2 degrees. Every additional degree increase in temperature beyond 28.2 is related to 1.8% more deaths per day. It means that if the temperature today was 29.2 degrees, there would be roughly 3.6% more death. If it was 30.2 degrees, there would be 5.4% more deaths, and so on. Like the concept of heat wave, the temperature threshold is different for different places depending on the country's income, health system, social policies, and so on. With rapid urbanization, the urban heat island effect will make the temperature threshold even more significant. Studies show that the temperature of the urban districts and dense residential areas in Hong Kong, such as Causeway Bay, Central, Mong Kok, and Tin Shui Wai, can be 3 to 7 degrees warmer than suburban areas. Everyone is at risk of heat-related health problems due to climate change, but people with more risk factors are more vulnerable. These risk factors include being old, being chronically ill, being overweight or obese, living in low-income districts, or being homeless. This makes climate change not only an environmental problem, but also a pressing issue of health inequity and social injustice. The amount of healthcare costs towards treating heat related illnesses will increase. Because by 2041, one in three people will be over 65 years old. There will be more cases of overweight, obesity, and chronic illnesses such as heart problems and respiratory diseases are on the rise, while more people will be living or working in urban heat islands. The question is not whether the temperature is rising. The question is whether we are ready for the higher temperature. The good news is that while climate change related deaths and illnesses are caused by human activities, they can also be prevented by human effort. We can protect people from being exposed to high temperature by issuing an early heat warning alert, protecting outdoor workers, offering temporary heat shelters, educating elderly or their caretakers about heat problems, and so on. On the other hand, 
We can also reduce the heat with proper urban planning, adopting hybrid vehicles, and taking actions that slow or reverse the trend of climate change. Climate change policies are often beneficial to both the environment and our health. We call these positive effects co-benefits. By cutting greenhouse gas emissions through building more cycling lanes, pedestrians, and parks, encourage active transport. This can result in significant reduction in heart disease, stroke, breast cancer, dementia, depression, diabetes, and increase from road traffic accidents. In China, using improved technology for electricity generation would improve outdoor air quality, which can reduce deaths due to cardiorespiratory diseases, chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder, stroke, lung cancer, and acute respiratory infections. Next time when you see a climate change campaign, think about the co-benefits that can protect the environment and the health of your family, friends, and community. In the last 7 minutes, you've learned how your body temperature is usually around 37 degrees and is regulated through sweating and rising heart rate. You've learned that in Hong Kong, temperature can rise by 6.8 degrees towards the end of this century. You've learned about the health impact of high temperature, such as heat stroke and heat cramps. And the temperature threshold of 28.2 degrees, above which would result in 1.8% more death. You've learned how the old, overweight or obese, homeless, and chronically ill people are more vulnerable to high temperature. And the concept of co-benefits, which refers to the environment and health benefits as a result of taking climate change actions. Remember, the question is not whether our climate is changing. The question is whether we are ready for the changes.